Magento 2 serves as a great example on how native lazy objects in PHP 8.4 could massively improve bootstrapping performance in every single request. The object manager in Magento 2 is quite a beast. And we frequently see 500 to 200 milliseconds spent in every request just creating objects and the object graph. Compared to the Symfony dependency injection container, it leaves a lot of room for improvements on the table. In this video, I'm going to walk you through my journey with the Magento Object Manager and uh, a prototype for native lazy objects that I've been working on and that Magento could benefit hugely from in their bootstrapping performance. Moin, I'm Benjamin and my work is focused on PHP performance topics for the last 10 years, helping thousands of developers, companies and open source projects along the way. A few weeks ago, I met up with Ivan in Amsterdam. Ivan is my favorite Magento performance expert and I really like bouncing ideas off of him. For example, I showed him my prototype for native lazy objects in Magento. He expanded on the work and posted about it on LinkedIn last week, showing a 200 milliseconds performance improvements in this case and asking for merchants, agencies and others to come forward to sponsor with these changes to the object manager, he's expecting a 200 milliseconds performance improvement for every request and he's asking merchants, agencies and others to come forward to sponsor this so he can release it as an open source library that everybody can benefit from. During our meet, he mentioned it would be hard to get this kind of change into the Magento core and replacing this code with a third party module is difficult because the object manager is deeply entangled in everything that Magento does. I am a hopeful and positive person about these things and I want to see every Magento 2 store owner benefit from this. Mark Schust from the Magento Academy also recently posted to LinkedIn on native lazy object in PHP and how they could benefit Magento. He contrasts Magento's proxy functionality with PHP 8.4's native lazy features and just generally shows how it works. The discussion in this post, however, went into how Magento could generally improve from using native lazy objects. And this is something I'm going to talk in this video about. While Mark mentions Magento has proxy classes which work using code generation, like for example in Symphony, this concept is not used effectively by Magento in the default setup and you cannot see real performance benefits from it. When a service definition in Magento uh, declares an argument dependency to service using the magic proxy suffix, then Magento knows to generate a proxy class for that during the DI compile command that you should use for production use. If we look at the generated proxy class, we see that instead of all the dependencies injected, it injects the object manager and then implements a pattern where on all the public methods, it calls get subject and delegates to the original method. Get subject then uses the object manager to create the instance and lazily loads it at that point. We can look at the call graph trace and tie trace to see how effective this um, lazy proxy generation mechanism in Magento is. So create the trace and then remembering from Uh, our look at the code that we can search the call graph for first the use of a proxy class with the constructor. We see how often proxies are created in this case. So uh, one page of calls of proxies are being generated, um, a handful of proxies being used, and then we can look for get subject how often that is called so we can see again a lot of times get subject is called so um, it's it's not really an effective use of proxies most of the proxies that are generated in magento or most of the classes that are generated as proxy are actually being used so um, there's not really an effective lazy loading mechanism in place here Let's look at my working prototype for native lazy objects in Magento. It works different than Magento's proxy objects by making every class lazy by default. The benefit of PHP 8.4 here is that there's really no overhead in using proxies 
and we can just implement it this way uh, natively. Looking at the compiled um, object factory, we can see how I added this code here. So first we have a way of running this functionality without um, using native lazy objects. So we delegate to the function do create. The function do create is the original code that Magento had before my changes. So I renamed the public function create to private function do create and then I added my own prototype code on top here. So we generate one trace uh, that immediately calls the do create method. And then let's look at the prototype. First, we resolve any requested type because it could be a virtual class to its final class name. We check for PHP 8.4. Then we check that the class is not already a proxy uh, based on the Magento proxy mechanism. We keep that. Um, we check that the class exists. We have to check that it's not a subclass of the session handler because internal classes cannot be proxied. This is a special case and I assume for a more complete solution, more classes need to be added there. Um, this is just the way to get it working with the Magento demo store that doesn't have any plugins or uh, uses any additional PHP functionality. Then we also need to restrict that to um, services that uh, have no additional arguments here. So um, that without this change, um, it's not working. Um, more, uh, I would need to investigate a lot more to find out what's the problem to improve the solution here. Then we see how uh, a native uh, pro proxy is uh, created using reflection. And the initializer callback just uh, uses this proxy and it calls the do create method like um, uh, the, uh, in a case where the class is not proxied. So this is a very simple way of making essentially every class a lazy proxy um, if it fulfills the requirements above here. And um, that, that is quite a lot of uh, classes that uh, we can see now in a core graph. First, let's look at the example without native um, uh, lazy loading. So in the core graph, we look for the compiled class and how it um, is getting called. So the do create method is the call um, is the function that initializes the services and uh, injects all the dependencies recursively. And you can see here because uh, Magento has very little lazy loading uh, in, in scale. There is a huge recursion happening by instantiating services. So in Tideways, you can see that by the recursion counter of functions. On the top level, we have 774 calls to the do create method. So this is the object manager creating objects. And then recursively, we can see how it goes one level, two level, three level, four levels deep and um, do create. Uh, by filtering for this, we can see here cases where it goes 14, 14 level deep um, to create the dependencies for a service. So huge object graphs that are being created by Magento. And the time for this is nine, 99 milliseconds in total just for creating all the objects and um, uh, recursively the dependencies. And um, for a core graph that has my native uh, lazy object uh, improvement, we can see that there's quite a different result. We see that do create is called a lot more, 1,211 uh, uh, times. However, that, that is not a regression, it's not worth the way native lazy objects work is that we don't do this recursively now. Instead, only when the objects are being used, they are created. And this is not really a recursive relationship anymore. So we see how the recursive object creation moves to the top in the core graph. Um, it's being called way more often. Um, however, time-wise, it's, um, it's much faster. The reason for this is that we need to actually compare 
all the numbers uh, being called here in total to the do create calls um, in the native lazy example. So here we can see that only the top levels here already have 1200 calls and then we see uh, there are a few hundred more calls to do create um, as the recursion increases. However, um, for the case where we use native lazy objects, in total there is um, um, just fewer calls to creating objects. And um, that makes um, quite the difference already. So how can we um, assess the impact of this? So we compare those two call graphs. We can already see here there's a massive performance improvement uh, for this, about 100 milliseconds. However, I wouldn't account that completely towards the native um, change, but uh, also to, um, to other things that are happening here. So let's look at the call graph. And we see that the most important benefit that we have here is that the composer autoloader is not called a lot anymore. And that is the actual benefit that lazy objects bring. If you don't instantiate the objects that you don't need, then the autoloader is not triggered. Um, in case of the Magento lazy objects, this is not working because every proxy also needs to instantiate um, all the dependencies and the proxy objects it's triggering the autoloader much, much uh, more often. And we are skipping that um, in the native lazy example. And we can see here that we have about 40 milliseconds saved just by not autoloading so many classes anymore. And that is the benefit of uh, using native lazy objects in a DI container by default and not um, using a mechanism where you opt into that. I hope I convinced you that native lazy objects are going to revolutionize dependency injection in PHP and Magento is a great example for that because the current object manager is so slow and Magento object graphs become so massive because of the extreme number of dependencies that servers usually have, all of which, which will be instantiated and autoloaded and initialized on every request. Let's hope the Magenta community finds a way to integrate these learnings into the framework or a third party library so that every Magenta store owner can benefit. I hope that uh, Ivan finds somebody to uh, work on this feature and make it production ready. This concludes my series on native lazy objects that started with part one of the series looking at Doctrine and then also looking at Symphony proxies. If you want to continue your journey with PHP performance topics, subscribe to the channel or the newsletter. The link is in the description. Bye.